HobbyLink.tv, and I'm Ardeth, and this is HLJ President Scott P. Hart. Hi. And he is here to show us the latest, greatest in the Sentai world, which is... Go Tokyo. Busters! And yeah. you have the array of loot. Yep, yep, I do. And um, this is actually my personal property because I bought this for my son, who's five, and uh, he was uh, kind enough to let us borrow it for today's, uh, for today's video here. Um, so yeah, these are the, the, the whole team here from Go Busters. It's February, and that means uh, that the, uh, the Sentai show changes uh, every year. Toei uh, renews their Sentai show in February, and we went from Go Kaiger, which was a fantastic show, uh, now to Go Busters. Not, not Ghost Busters, but Go Busters. Uh, and uh, I watched the first episode. Some other people probably caught it on, online in, in some ways or here in Japan. And uh, it couldn't be more different than Go Kaiger uh, in terms of atmosphere. It's kind of like a Sentai show meets Evangelion. Yeah, yeah, with some of the elements. It's also kind of like the old, uh, the old uh, rescue. Yeah, yeah. It's got a, the it's, 90s it's set, in a, modern, set yeah. in a modern era. Now, there's some people out there probably going like, these people look like in their 40s or something. They're talking about a kid's show. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> and okay, all right, all right. Fair enough. I got into these because I had children, but... You, you, have, know, a, you have a valid but, excuse. I have no excuse. That's my excuse. But, you know, even if my kids aren't around and I haven't seen an episode because I was busy or overseas that week or something, I always catch up on it because they're just fun. Mm. They're just a lot of fun. I mean, if you try to, you know, apply all kinds of, you know, logic and, and craziness to it, you're not going to have fun. But if you just go, look, I'm just going to have fun for 25 minutes or whatever these things are, then you can have a lot of fun. So for those of you who haven't had the opportunity yet to see Ghostbusters, let me uh, let me uh, introduce the, our cast here. Of course, Red Buster, you know, your, your, your central character here. Um, but the different thing now, Blue Buster, Yellow Buster, you probably already figured that out. The different thing with this series, though, is that each of our, our characters, and as you can see, there's only three, which is a break from recent years where we've always had five, for starters, uh, is that they all have a robot sidekick. Um, please meet Cheetah Nick, uh, Gorisaki Banana, and Usada Lettuce. Now, the names are, are very cute and everything, and we'll get around that. As you, can, as you can tell, we're kind of a common Rider Axel here. He, he turns into a motorcycle. Uh, Cheetah Nick does, uh, and of course our hero rides on him. So there's kind of a almost a common rider theme going in the Sentai because our hero rides the motorcycle quite a bit. Now we've only had one episode, so we haven't seen what these guys do yet. Mm -hmm. um, although Usada Lettuce makes smart remarks, and uh, Gordisaki Banana, despite his size, is sort of the worry wart apparently of of the group. Uh, but we'll see how all that pans out in coming episodes. Um, but for the toys, yeah, we've got lots of cool toys. Uh, we should have brought in the uh, the Ichigan Buster, which is that uh, camera slash weapon uh, that they use. If you watch the show, they immediately are shooting bad guys with their cameras, which is uh, kind of an interesting thing. Not even iPhones do that. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, but the, the big uh, toy that got debuted in the first episode uh, was uh, Go Buster Ace. And here's Go Buster Ace. Now, this is a, a different thing. Here, you guys get out of the way. It's a, a different thing from, from Cheetah Nick. Originally, when I saw some of the previews, I thought Cheetah Nick was going to be turning into the car, mm -hmm. but he doesn't. Cheetah Nick, he's kind of like the, the onboard computer win for, for Go Buster Ace here. Um, if, the, if you pop the nose out here, um, kind of in a, in a ranger key style, you can see Cheetah Nick is kind of right there. He's like sort of the, the pilot figure, and he kind of controls the machine while our hero, Red Buster, is, is driving it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, it's animal themed. Uh, and since it is animal themed, of course, it transforms into animal mode. So, ready? And the legs out. Now the fun, the fun articulation is at the back here, this, this wing slash radar antenna slash tailpiece here. Um, slides to one side and points up and then this tilts down and it's the tail. 
so you can wag your little tail here. Oh, well, that's you awesome. Even as spots? Yeah. Cause yes, the yes. Cheetah, you notice when you, when you open the, the sides here, you have sort of these cheetah-like uh, sort of spot patterns on the side. So um, we had one brief sequence in the opening episode where he was in cheetah mode, uh, not to be confused with Nick Cheetah, which is a D. Uh, the cheetah form of the, uh, uh, the machine was, was running through an urban landscape, uh, skillfully navigating corners uh, on all fours. Uh, but of course, you, you wouldn't want to attack the bad, evil robot that looked a lot like an Evangelion Sto, uh or Angel uh, that came down in that first episode. While you're in cheetah mode, you got to go mano a mano, right? Uh, with, with limbs and everything. So yes, of course, there's another mode. Uh, this guy can do robot mode. Now let's see if I can do this without botching it too bad here. All of this goes back the way it was in car mode. And uh, then... Pop the face off here. Here we go. Broken. Oh. These are going to be our legs here. And we have little feet-like things which uh, pop out. Uh, and then the whole top side here also comes apart and rolls forward. Uh, and the arms come out and become our, our arms ready to hold our, our, our sword now. There's a neat ball joint here that, that holds the sword. And uh, I must say, I don't know how many of you have ever had a chance to handle any of these Bandai, Sentai, or Kamen Rider toys, but they are built so sturdily. Mm. I mean, they're really, all of the, the snap joints and stuff are really made to take uh, young kid abuse. Uh, so, I mean, unless he's literally throwing it into concrete surfaces, these toys just don't break. You really, really got to abuse them. Of course, uh, giving a plug for these guys, too. These things are, are nigh invincible. Um, I mean, you can literally throw them anywhere you want. Of course, they don't break. Um, but let's finish our transformation here. Uh, the final step, of course, being the theme of GoBuster seems to be cool shades. Uh, and even the robot, shh, he's got cool shades there and a little antenna that pops up. So now we have Buster Ace ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the worst that outer space can throw at humanity. Um, no knees or, or hip joints, unfortunately, but the, the arms are very well articulated, so you can get some modicum of, of action poses going on with your Buster Ace. Now, it's not out yet, but if you look on the box for Buster Ace, then uh, you can see that there's going to be a yellow robot and a blue robot like the bunny and uh, Gorisaki over here, which will then join up. They apparently both split in half and like half and half of his robot become bigger legs. Half and half of her robot becomes bigger arms and we get GoBuster O, which is gonna be the huge uh, robot version uh, that will join up with this toy, but not on sale until later this month. Now, the timing of when these come out, does it seem like the release is just shortly before that episode goes? Like yeah. A um, little inside information in the industry here. The shows are always on a Sunday. We always get the product the Friday before the show goes on the air. And Bondi is very careful that they release the stuff on that kind of a schedule. So most stores, you know, here in Japan, if you were shopping in Japan, you wouldn't be able to get the product until like the day before it comes out. So we can always tell pretty much if we get a new robot toy in on a Friday, it's like, ah, this is going to show up in the show on Sunday. That's kind of the way they, they work that out. The whole Bandai and Toei marketing machine, the way they, they coordinate all of their releases and the toys and the content of the show and all that, is frankly really impressive um, as sort of capitalism honed to a, a really fine point. You can look at that cynically if you want, or you can be impressed, and I, I, I choose the latter. I think it's pretty impressive the way those guys work that stuff out. I wonder if there are situations where, like with, the, with mm. the toys coming out just before the, the uh, air date, whether there are situations where, you know, a, a kid is able to get, say, the new mecha. Right. And then watch the episode to see how it happens. And he's got his mecha in hand and then works to make it. Well, I know one five-year-old that had that happen last Sunday. <laughs> um. uh, his dad uh, gave him the toy before the show, so he was there waiting for the appearance even before it showed up. But not all kids in Japan uh, have a have a father who works in the toy industry, so... <laughs> it's always helpful, always helpful. But, you know, when I, when I first started buying these things for him, I always used to think, man, compared to the action toys I had when I was a kid, these are so chintzy. I mean, come on, the waist these moves and the move arms move, and that's yeah. it. What kind of toy is this? This is so, so cheap. And then two or three years ago, 
when I was when Iron Man was 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 out and really big, uh, and I was home in the United States on a business trip, I saw for twenty bucks or whatever uh, a neat Iron Man action figure that had full posability. I thought, oh my my son Matthew, he'll love this. So I bought him this Iron Man toy, uh, which you know, like I said, the legs move and everything. Mm-hmm. Brought it back to Japan and gave it to him, and he started playing with it. And after about thirty minutes, he comes up to me, he says. Dad, can you get me an Iron Man that has straight legs? Apparently, that was just too much posability for a four-year-old or a three-year-old or whatever he was at the time. You know, because if he wants to stand him up, you know, you got to get the center of gravity just right, and you got to get the legs even. But with these guys, it's just like boom, you know, there Absolutely. you are, you're done. It seems like there's not much in the way of uh, seams for stuff to get inside too. I mean, you could scoot them around the bath, you could put oh, them yeah. in the sandbox. Oh yeah, if you play with them in the bathtub, and boy, these guys get heavy use in the bathtub at our house. Uh, then you do get a little water inside. In fact, they all they all just break right in half like this. Ooh. So if you're concerned about mold or mildew, we just you know break them in half and let the let the water drain out. Uh, unfortunately, putting them back together is definitely a dad task wow. because you kind of kind of kind of have the finger strength to squish this uh, waist portion uh, back up inside the chest portion here. Uh, so there's a bit of a trick here, um, but uh, your kids won't be able to do it. But but dad can. Wow. So. Wow. You are my hero. Of course, the thing, if you do that, then you can do mix and match. Oh. We're getting a little over the well, top here. Well, yeah. they're all black pants. But they're all, well, their boots oh, are different true, colors, though. So if you want to get silly, what you do is you start, you start like breaking her in half and putting her skirt on his torso and stuff like that. And believe me, we've done about a zillion permutations and combinations at the hard zone. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's my guilty pleasure. Uh, every Sunday morning, I really look forward to watching the Sentai shows. Um, Go Kaiju, like I said, was, was a great show that really uh, rolled in all of the other 34 previous Sentai shows. It was shows. neat with all the little it, the references and little yeah, the, jokes it's, and it's, yeah, the in-jokes and the self-awareness was, was really a lot mm-hmm. of fun. Uh, so we're all hoping that uh, Go Busters is going to be half as fun as, as Go Kaiju was. But I think after watching Sunday's show, it's off to a good start. And uh, the toys are starting to look pretty cool here, so hopefully uh, we'll have a lot more cool stuff to show you on this show as they get released. Absolutely. And now we've gathered the array. All the stuff, yeah. Um, Go Busters is not just cool giant robots. Um, these guys, they're kind of like special forces, and they have all sorts of neat gear. Um, this is the Ichigan Buster. Now, Ichigan in Japanese is what they call an SLR. Now, it's like an Ichigan Def in Japanese. So this is Ichigan Buster, which is their, their camera weapon. Now, can you imagine how convenient it would be if you were in special forces, you're trying to take pictures of a target before you knocked them out or, or took them out, and you could do it with the same device? How convenient would that be? Uh, well, that's what they're doing in, in Go Busters with the Ichigan Buster here. It's a camera that turns into a gun-like weapon. Great stuff. Now, similarly, how about a set of binoculars that can become a sword weapon? Hey, how convenient would that be? Um, so here we can see on the back of the box, you see it starts in, in binoculars mode here, so you can be surveying your target, and then when it's time to take them out, boom, your binoculars become a very forcible blade weapon, I guess. And if that's not enough to take it out, and you happen to have an Ichigan Buster with you, then you can dock them together to make a special Buster, which you can see right here. So if you've got both of these devices, they, they can form together to be kind of a convoluted sort of bazooka-like super weapon here. Now, of course, we don't have time to go over all the details, but all of these have got uh, sound chips and batteries, and they make cool noises, and on this one, you even get uh, uh, voices from the, uh, the three robots from the show are going to talk to you while they're surveilling your uh, target and everything. So uh, they've really made it easy for uh, the kids of all ages. Uh, to have a lot of fun with all of the uh, the gear from these guys. Now the uh, the transforming sequence in Go Busters works with this wrist device, uh, which is called the Morphin Brace. Yes, that's right. They've adopted the American word Morphin, as in Mighty Morphin, uh, and uh, they even have uh, English. Uh, um, narration on the show. It's morphin time when they're doing their transformation. So they have this this uh, wrist mounted thing with sunglasses that pop up and then magically leap onto their faces uh, and to to complete the cool um, you know effect in their masks. So this is the morphin brace, which of course uh, makes noise and has pop up sunglass action. Unfortunately, it doesn't leap onto your helmet automatically, but you'll have to imagine that part yourself. Uh, and then, as usual, of course, they've just taken the uh, Go Busters motif and stuck it onto other products that aren't necessarily Go Busters directly related. We've got a sort of a cool wristwatch That's thing cute. here. Yeah. Uh, if you have a small child, absolutely recommend, especially if he's a boy 
one of these, which is your basic punching bag. Um, let him burn his energy and take out his frustrations on that instead of things that cost more. I don't understand why they don't do it of, you know, the evil bad guys. The bad guys? Yeah, yeah. you've got to beat up the hero with this. Don't I don't you? get yeah. that, yeah. Uh, maybe it's a chance for kids to prove that they're, they're tougher or something. I don't know. And, you know, battling tops. Hey, whatever. Uh, whatever you want to uh, get the violence out of your system with. Uh, there's another way for you here if you like to do it with a Go Busters motif while you're doing it. So, and this is of course just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you know the Bandai marketing machine and, and other companies. You know if you're here in Japan, you can get Go Busters fish sausages. You can get Go Busters gum. You name it, it's all there. Uh, but you know we don't go that far. We just do the toys because that's what we do best. Okay, well I appreciate you coming on. Our super Sentai super specialist. Well, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I'm probably am sort of top here at HLJ, at least as far as personal consumption of <laughs> Sentai product goes. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, these, are, these are great fun toys. Great fun toys. I love them. And it's scary to think this is just the start. Yeah, yeah, this is the tip of the, uh, the, tip of the iceberg that's coming from Bondi on this stuff. So it's going to be great stuff in the future. And if you have any questions on what you've seen today, or things unveiled today, or things to come, go ahead and leave questions or comments in the uh, underneath in the comment section on YouTube. We're also posted on hobbylink.tv. I'm glad to field your questions. Yeah. Forward them on to Scott. And if you let me back on the show, I'll be for you to spew out some answers at some future yeah, date. Absolutely. That'd be great. Okay. Well, that's it for now. Next week, Robin will be back, and we will see you then on Toy Hengoku. Yeah.